Hello again. In this section of the notes, we're going to talk about the light independent reactions. So first, we want to consider where this is happening. As we mentioned previously in the light reactions, it's occurring in the thylakoid of the chloroplast. But the light independent reactions, the Calvin cycle, is going to occur in the stroma, so the space outside of the thylakoid. Now, all those, although these do not require light, they require the products that came from the light reactions. So you see how the arrows are going in. So it says the products of the light re of the light dependent reactions. Remember, we just made a little bit of ATP and then we made NADPH are going to be used to power glucose synthesis. So I like to think of this phase of photosynthesis as the synthesis part. We're making this sugar. So on to the back of your paper. <clears throat> it says the Calvin cycle or the C3 cycle uses carbon dioxide, a carbon dioxide capturing sugar. In this case, it has a fancy name of ribulose biphosphate or we like to call it RUBP for short. We have a series of enzymes that are catalyzing the reaction. We use ATP and NADPH like we said just a minute ago. Okay. Now, let me start with one thing is that one thing that's kind of confusing about this is that these cycles go by multiple names. We call this the C3 cycle because the first product that is produced is a three carbon product. This will become important later when we talk about the C4 cycle. So it's sort of just as a heads up. But if you wanted to, on your notes, kind of write all of the synonyms of what this is, C3 cycle, the Calvin cycle, the dark reactions, the light independent reactions, this is all talking about the same exact thing. And that can be confusing, but if you just start getting used to knowing all of them, then that will be helpful. So we're going to go ahead and draw this out. I'm going to switch to black um, and use some colors to identify certain things. Um, but one thing I'm going to make a note here is that I'm going to show you uh, double the amount of what your book shows. Because in the book, <clears throat> it doesn't produce glucose. It produces a three carbon molecule. And since glucose is six carbon, we're going to double all of the numbers so that we can show glucose being made. Um, so I'm going to double all of my amounts that I'm writing in here. <clears throat> so we start off with knowing that carbon dioxide is going to come into this situation. And I'm going to start off with six of them, six carbon dioxides. <clears throat> we said that this sugar, ribulose biphosphate, or RUBP, is going to meet up with this carbon dioxide. So RUBP, we're going to use six of them. RUBP is actually a five carbon molecule. CO2 is one carbon. So five carbons plus six carbons, I'm sorry, plus one carbon gives you a six carbon molecule. Okay. We're simplifying this process a little bit um, because it is complicated and we're just trying to show the general process. The six carbon molecule would be broken down into three carbon molecules. So I'm going to show that right here. Um, so again, a five carbon plus a one carbon gives you six, six carbons. But when I split them in half, I get 12, three carbon molecules. The book also doesn't show water being used, but we do use water um, during photosynthesis. So I'm going to show water kind of coming in here. This process of capturing the carbon dioxide into this sugar uses a very important enzyme. So actually I'll use green for my enzymes. 
called Rubisco. And I'm going to label him as an enzyme that's capturing, that's part of this. We're not going to go into all of the enzymes that we're using, but there are a few that are important that you need to know. So Rubisco is the enzyme that functions during the C3 cycle. Again, we're going to get into more of that later. Okay, so then we're going to take these three carbon molecules. I'm going to draw all the way down here. And I've got G3P or um, if your notes went uh, said P-gal, this phosphoglyceraldehyde, but the book uses G3P, so I'm going to stick with that. <clears throat> Those are also three carbon molecules still, so we're kind of transforming them. But then this is where we're kind of more interested in having glucose comes out, coming out. And remember that glucose is C6H12O6. So glucose is a six carbon molecule, right? And then this comes back around. So let's fill in a couple of things that are happening here. Because we're building a molecule, we need to use ATP. We're gonna say 12 ATP come in, and then that means that 12 ADP come out. So I'm gonna keep track of ATP with my yellow. My electrons are also being dropped off by NADPH. When they lose electrons, when they drop them off, it, they become NADP plus. So I'm gonna track this guy with purple. There we go. Okay. Remember that these came from the light reactions. So we're using them to power glucose synthesis. This is the synthesis part. And then over here, we need a little bit more ATP going in to power the rest of this cycle. Okay. So one of the things we'll talk about in another video is noticing that you're using a lot more ATP than you are NADPH to power this cycle. So we will cover a topic of cyclic and non-cyclic electron flow in order to keep up with the ATP demand to power this reaction. But for now, let's just finish out this note guide. So very basic about the function of each of these two steps for the light reactions. We're going to write down, they capture light energy. Remember, you can't make energy. So it's capturing light energy. And you use pigments to do that, like chlorophyll. And it's transformed into chemical energy. So we want to specify here that it's being stored in ATP and NADPH. The other importance of that is that those products that we just talked about, the products of the light reactions, again, the ATP and the NADPH, are used to power the Calvin cycle. So again, this ATP is not being used for the cell to do mechanical work or transport work or chemical work. It's just used to power the other half of photosynthesis to make glucose. So the function of the dark reactions, the Calvin cycle, Remember all those acronyms, not acronyms, uh, synonyms for it. Um, it's basically, like we said, using ATP and NADPH from the light reactions to make glucose. We're going to take this a little step further 
to connect it to cellular respiration, right? So glucose, if you're making this inside of the chloroplast, then that means that glucose needs to be able to move out into the cytosol to be used in glycolysis, right? Because glycolysis happens in the cytosol. And then from there, you go to cellular respiration. Remember that that's Krebs, electron transport chain. From cellular respiration, you get ATP for cellular work. Now you can use it to power your transport proteins and all that good stuff. Ah. Okay, I'm going to stop this here right now and I'll finish out another little video with this.